Welcome back. In the last section, we talked about cross-validation um, for, for the estimation of test error for supervised learning. Now we'll talk about a closely related idea called the bootstrap. It's a powerful method for, for assessing uncertainty in estimates. In particular, for getting, getting an idea of standard errors of an estimate and getting confidence limits. Wow, it sounds like a powerful technique, Rob. Are there any good books on the topic? <laughs> As a matter of fact, no. Um, Rob, Rob has got a very uh, famous book with Brad Efron on the bootstrap. Oh, I've got a very famous, actually, speaking of famous, my supervisor was Brad Efron, um, who is now our colleague, uh, and he, he, he's the inventor of the bootstrap. And you, well, there's a conversation with Brad in this course, which he talks about the, um, how he came to think of the, the bootstrap. The bootstrap was something he thought of in 1979, and it's become one of the most important techniques in statistics in the last 30 years. So where does the name come from? Well, it's the idea of pulling yourself up by your bootstraps, um, which is from a fable by uh, Rudolf Erich Raspe. The Baron fall, uh, the adventures of Baron Munchausen, he had, the Baron had fallen to the, the bottom of a deep lake and couldn't get out. So he had an idea. He thought he'd pull himself up by his bootstraps, his own bootstraps. And in the fable, he managed to pull himself out of the lake um, and save his life. So that's that's thought where the term bootstrap came from, and that's the term we're using here. It's not the same as the term bootstrap that one uses in computer science to boot a computer, but it's the same idea. You're trying to pull yourself up from what you've got. In this case, we'll see the bootstrap, the idea of a bootstrap is we're going to use the data itself to try to get more information about our, our estimator. So let's, let's start with a simple example. Suppose we have um, a fixed sum of money that we want to invest. Um, in two assets that yield returns x and y, where x and y are random quantities depending on how the assets do, and we want to just, we want to invest a fraction alpha of our money in x and the remaining one minus alpha in y. We want to choose the fraction alpha to, to minimize the total risk or the variance of our investment. So we have random variables x and y. We want to choose the alpha to minimize the variance of our of alpha x plus one minus alpha times y. Okay. Now, in this population model, you can show that the best, the, the, the best fraction alpha is given by this formula. Okay? Uh, sigma squared y, that's the variance of y. There's the variance of x. This is the, the covariance between x and y. Okay? And they're defined here. So in other words, if we know the variance of x, the variance of y, and their covariance, then this is the, the best amount um, proportion to put into, uh, into x, and the remaining goes into y, to minimize the total variance. Okay, so those are population yeah. quantities, aren't those, they? Those are population quantities. So, since they're population quantities, they, they're not known to us um, in general. But if we ha if we have a, a data set from the population that we're under under study here, we can get an idea of these of these quantities, the variances and the covariances, um, from the sample values from the from the data set, and then plug them into the formula to get a. Uh, the alpha hat, which is the which is the proportion that we should invest in x. Okay, so again, we have if we have a sample of x and y, we can uh, get the empirical estimates of the variances and covariances, plug them in, and get a an estimate of alpha. So in this next slide, we see we, we've we've created a simulated population. We've simulated um, investments x and y. There's four different simulations here, each one containing 100 pairs of x and y. And for each one, we take that data, we compute the variances and covariances, and we plug, plug it into the formula to get an, an, an estimate for alpha. And here we see the four estimates of alpha for the four panels, 0.576, et cetera, to 0.651. So they're averaging around 0.6. Okay? So if we want to get an idea of the standard deviation of alpha hat, we can just repeat this process lots of times. Let's say a thousand times. Okay, so we get a thousand panels like this. Each one gives us a, a, an alpha hat from the formula on the previous slide. And we do this a thousand times. We take the standard standard error of those. Well, actually, let's should do this a thousand times. We'll go to the look at the histogram in a couple of slides. This this histogram on the left shows the one thousand values over a thousand simulations from this experiment. Each one is a value of alpha hat. And they average around 0.6. It's called okay. a sampling distribution of that estimator. Right. And the true value actually, since we know, in this case, we're playing God, right? We know the true variances and covariances. 
We know of the true alpha, and it's about 0.6. So I've indicated here with a purple line the 0.6. And the, the, the sampling distribution is averaging around 0.6, as we think it should. Um, so the mean over the 1,000 estimate, did I finish this? Okay, I should say, yeah, I've said this already. Um, the, here's the, the histogram we've seen. Uh, for the simulations, actually, these were the values of the parameters that we set, and that implied a true value of alpha of 0.6, which was that middle value in the histogram. So that's a true value of alpha. Okay. And now we can also use this histogram to get to kind of the standard deviation of the estimates just by picking the standard deviation of those 1,000 values of alpha hat. And here, here we've done that, and that's 0 0.083. So the standard error of alpha hat is roughly 0 0.083. The standard error of an estimator yeah, right. is the standard deviation in that sampling distribution. So if you're able to recompute the estimator many, many times from new samples, the standard deviation is called the standard error. All right. So if we repeat this experiment, we expect the, each time that the, on average alpha hat would be about 0.6 and would vary by a standard deviation of about 0.083, right? which we're seeing in this histogram. Right? It's averaging about 0.08, and the standard deviation is a well, it's about 0 0.08 of this histogram. Okay. So that's all fine, except we can actually apply this with real data. If we had a sample of investments, X and Y, we don't actually have the ability to sample from the population. We, we don't have the population. We have a single sample. So in most of statistics, we don't have access to the population. All we have is a sample. If we had access to the population, we actually wouldn't need statistics at all for the most part. We could learn all we wanted to know from the population. But... In the real world, we don't we have data. We don't we don't actually know the populations from which that data arose. We have an idea of what it look, might look like, but we don't we can't generate more data. So we can't actually we can't produce the histogram on the left because we don't have the ability to generate more data. But the bootstrap is going to try. It's it's going to mimic this process by sampling not from the population but from the from the data itself. So the data itself is going to act as the population. So instead of obtaining independent data sets from the population, which we can't do without access to the population, we're going to sample from the data itself with replacement. And I'll remind you in a minute what that means. But basically, we're going to sample from the data set itself and then use those samples to get an idea of, of the variability in the same way that we use the samples from the population to produce this histogram. We're going to sample from the data. Uh, the data itself is the population. So here's, here's, here's an idea of, this is an, an illustration of bootstrap sampling, which is sampling with replacement. I've created a data set here just with three observations, just so we could draw it on a single slide. Here's our original data. Here's the three observations. And now each of these is a bootstrap sample. Bootstrap sample is drawn with replacement of the same, uh, the same size as the original data. So the original data here has got three observations, so we're going to draw three observations with replacement. What does that mean? It means that the chance of each observation being sampled is, is the same, one-third, but it's done with replacement. So imagine you put three balls into a bag, say numbered one, two, and three. We, we uh, put our hand in the bag, we pull out one at random, maybe we'll get number one. That's our first observation. Now to get our second observation, we put the ball back in the bag, so that's why it's called with replacement, and we sample again from all three balls. So at every stage, each ball has the same probability of being sampled and can be sampled more than once. At each, uh, from stage one to n. So here, for example, uh, we've, we've got observations three twice, and observation one once. Observation two didn't get sampled at all. Okay, in this second bootstrap sample, again, we're drawing three samples from these three observations. We happen to get two, three, and one. So each observation actually occurred once. In this next sample, we got observation two twice, and then observation one. So. Uh, just to summarize, we sampled the same number of observations as in our original sample with replacement, meaning each, each observation can appear more than once or maybe not at all, depending on what happens as we, 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 we uh, draw the samples. So these are called bootstrap samples or bootstrap data sets. And then to each bootstrap data set, we apply our, the estimator, in this case our, the alpha, this is the proportion of investment x. We compute it from this sample just as we computed it from the original sample. And we use the standard deviation of these numbers to give us an idea of the standard error, the standard deviation of, of alpha, alpha hat.
So having drawn a thousand bootstrap samples and got our thousand estimates of alpha hat, we can draw the histogram as we did before. Let's go back to the slide. So now in the, in the back on slide 29, the hist remember on the right, on, excuse me, on the left is the histogram when we sample from the population, the histogram of alpha hat values. We can't sample from the population because we don't have the population, so we did bootstrap sampling. We get the histogram in the middle, the blue histogram. And it looks very much like the one on the left. Um, it's averaging around 0.6, and its variability is about the same as we got sampled from the population. As a matter of fact, well, so over here we've got the um, box plots of the, the alpha hat values, um, the true ones from the sample from the population and the bootstrap ones, and they're looking pretty similar. They're averaging around 0.6, although the bootstrap is a little lower in this case. But in general, this gives you a pretty good idea of what we would get if we could sample from the population. And the standard error estimate, let's see, do we have that in the next, back here? Yeah, the standard error estimate is 0 0.087, which is similar. We got 0 0.083 before when we used to sample from the population. So the bootstrap is, is um, used the data itself as the population and got us a good estimate of the standard error, very similar to the one we'd get if we could sample from the population. So we've seen some examples of a bootstrap in simple problems. In the next session, we'll talk about the, the method of more generality.